hospital fully operational and they intensify. What role, if any, UMC will play in its future? And it all depends on that $90 million debt. It has some of you saying things like Harrington with this. There has to be balance. UMC employees and patients are suffering due to the debt of EPCH, and that's the sad truth. It's one of the most talked about stories on our Facebook pages today. The city opting to not follow through on plans for a Northeast El Paso water park. Alexis with this, we don't even have a hospital or mall. And the only thing we could have had to make the Northeast profitable to the city, they shelf it? We do need a new rep. Well, the Andrews High School boys basketball team now just two wins away from a state championship. Some of you were saying, good job, Andrews. Now let's make it to the finals and take the state crown. But then some of you are attacking us, like Patrick saying apparently KBIA and the EPISD believe Andrus deserves no less than rinky dink. It's just the Northeast after all. But for Storm Track Weather Team predicting some storms today or forecasting them, I should say, Nicole, right on the money, are more expected. Well, Bob, I'm tracking some showers and even thunderstorms on Doppler radar. We'll take a closer look at these storms and the rainfall totals. I'll let you know how much rain we're expecting tonight and the rest of your work week coming up in Storm Track Weather. It's all next on ABC 7 at 9. Get ready. You become part of the day's news right now. Live, where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley at Las Cruces to El Paso and the Borderland. This is ABC 7 at 9 on the El Paso Las Cruces CW. Well, it has been on and off a wet Monday here in the borderland, keeping you ahead of the rain now with our exclusive mountain cam. We're also watching the roads as well as we always do with our textile traffic camera network uh, watching the roads here. You can see everything looks dry, nice and calm. This is I-10 and Yarrow. No problems there, but of course that could change as more storms are in your forecast. Hello everybody. Thanks so much for joining us here on ABC 7 at 9 on the CW. I'm Bob Harp and over in the Storm Track Weather Lab, the one and only Nicole Gomez. What is the deal outside right now? Well, we still have some scattered activity on Doppler radar, so let's take a closer look at what we're seeing now and expecting later tonight. As you can see, most of the heaviest activity is towards our east. Still seeing some scattered light moderate rainfall across the boot hill of New Mexico, tracking towards Dimming and even Las Cruces, but again, very light activity. So we zoom a little closer where most of the rainfall is taking place around Fort Hancock and Sierra Blanca as we zoom in. Also along I-10 towards Van Horn. Again, this system mainly bringing us light to moderate rainfall, but most of the thunderstorms are tracking through portions of Texas. So far, this is what we picked up at the El Paso International Airport. Just a little rain, 0 0.01, and we're still seeing some rainfalls. As the storms continue to pass, of course, those rain totals will go up. Now, tomorrow, we're expecting partly sunny skies. I'll let you know if we're tracking more rain. And if we could also see more rain and wind this weekend, that's coming up in your full forecast. Bob. Right, thanks so much for that, Nicole. We appreciate that. Okay, Nicole, we know you're a very busy lady these days. You are also keeping us on top of all the social media buzz that's happening right now. This cast gives you a voice every night. So get out your laptops, your smartphones. We want to see you on the CW. You can join us on Facebook, Twitter, and KVIA.com. It's pretty easy, right? All right. <laughs> thanks, Nicole. Well, as you connect to the ABC7 social media network tonight, let's get you to the stories behind the social media buzz. First up, if you haven't heard, the El Paso Children's Hospital and University Medical Center, they are now working through mediation again. UMC saying it is willing to forgive nearly half of the millions of dollars owed, 90 million owed, if Children's becomes a subsidiary of UMC. Children says that would give UMC simply too much power over Children's Hospital. Oh, doctors from Children's Hospital proposing other compromises like have El Paso first pay a fair reimbursement share uncompensated care money for children and services at cost, access federal and state funds, and renegotiate the debt. But County Judge Veronica Escobar says the majority of that has already been done. She says UMC and Children's renegotiated the contract cost last summer, and UMC did already negotiate or renegotiate the debt. Plus, she says Children's had a chance to file for grants but did not. Still, the doctor's main contention that children's would essentially become a children's wing within UMC, crippling their efforts to recruit pediatric specialists who want to work at the independent children's hospital.
And Herlinda tonight telling us, let's put on our gown uh, or grown up clothes, excuse me, roll up our sleeves and work to make the hospital the choice for the children of West Texas and New Mexico. Denise, you're telling us tonight they don't provide more services than Providence, they aren't anything special. Andrea is saying, as a retired ER nurse from PMH, I learned firsthand how often, uh, excuse me, too often how much this community needed specialized pediatric care. I voted for El Paso Children's Hospital because we needed all the resources we can get. And then Maggie, the financial burden on the city and the hospital itself could have been reduced by investing in an established institution, not building one with the only intention of offering competition. Of course, the story is hot on our Facebook pages tonight. Join the discussion, and as soon as anything breaks, as far as the uh, negotiations underway are concerned, we will certainly let you know about it. Hey, well, this is the El Paso Border Patrol agent who was charged with sexual assault of a child. ABC 7 confirming 29-year-old Luis Angel Lozada. He was arrested Friday and posted a $75,000 bond to get out. The six-year Border Patrol agent is now on leave. We're working to find out if the alleged assault happened while he was on the job. 38-year-old Joe Herrera is the man police say shot two brothers near Hondo Pass and Railroad. The shooting happened at his family's restaurant this weekend. Police saying a former employee, Daniel Castro, and his brother Jesus were picking up a takeout order at Casita Linda. This was Saturday afternoon. Herrera says he wouldn't pay for it. Now, Joe Herrera's mother, Yolanda, says the brothers got into an argument with her son and he shot them in self-defense. Both are in critical condition tonight at University Medical Center. Still no arrests because of that deadly stabbing last night on the 8900 block of Roberts Drive in northeast El Paso. Police saying a 30-year-old man was found lying on the ground with stab wounds on his upper body. He died at UMC shortly after. If you have any information about this case, you're asked to call police. So the city's plan for a 40-acre water park by Cohen Stadium in Northeast El Paso no longer in the works. The El Paso Inc. is reporting two companies made bids to build that attraction, but an evaluation committee recently told city leaders it's not in El Paso's best interest to move forward with the project at this time. Well, Abby telling us tonight, boo! We could have used the jobs and something close to the Northeast. Eric saying it's a sad situation. El Paso is a very large city with nothing to offer citizens. And then Raul says the city is too worried about uh, what to do downtown for the billionaire and for their pockets. Now, this one is a hot one. I said a few minutes ago, one of the most talked about stories today on our Facebook pages. It actually sparked a whole other debate pitting one side of the town against the other. You have to hear what people are saying. We'll have that coming up in just a little bit. For now, though, Northeast El Pasoans, they're focused on the Andrus High School boys basketball team. They are in the final four of the state playoffs. The Eagles beat Palo Duro Saturday with a buzzer beater. Oh, I was biting my nails on that one. Now they're going to face the number one team in the state. The website Max Preps actually ranks Lancaster 10th best in the country. They're a big team. Two six nines, they start six five. They've got uh, some size. Of, they've got good speed. Um, they've been beaten four times. They've won 30, 30 plus, and um, you know they present some some challenges uh, for us. Well, the game is Thursday at six o'clock El Paso time in San Antonio. You can watch it live through a link that we will post at kvia.com for a webcast, plus game updates and Facebook pages and Twitter. Will keep you in the know. And Andrews coach Jim Forbes, by the way, he took the Riverside Rangers to the state final four, the same place he's at right now back in 1995. And he thinks he has a better chance of advancing this time around. A lot of you are excited about the game on our Facebook page. Daniel says, I say we set up a big projector at Veterans Park and we all cook out and watch it. It may look a little pixelated, but so what? And then others like Irma, Monique, and Veronica saying, go, good luck, Eagles. And go, Eagles, too. Both proud Andrews grads. And you know, Nicole, this story actually has some folks tonight in Northeast El Paso hating on ABC7, <laughs> saying that we really don't give the Northeast schools the same coverage as the others. And they say... Um, we need to change our act. They're not shy about telling us that because we have that discussion coming up. And Nicole, again, both of us grads, I'm sure we have a lot to say about that as oh, well. Oh, yes. All right, another news coming up. And a round of applause as both County Manager Julia Brown and Commissioner Chair Billy Garrett highlighted recent achievements within Doniana. But then the mood changed. The two also spoke about the possibility of raising the sales tax. 
Garrett and Brown want to maximize, or the maximum increase, I should say, allowed by the state, three-eighths of one percent. They say it would generate $12 million in the revenue for capital and economic development projects and to expand county operations. Then, a different hot topic. I don't know um, what kind of selective amnesia he's suffering from, but he does know what he did wrong. He confessed to it. Also out of that same speech in the Doniana County at the state of the county, the county manager with harsh words for the embattled county treasurer. David Gutierrez, remember he admitted to offering money to a co-worker for sex, yet refuses to leave his post. Commissioners don't have the power to remove Gutierrez because he's an elected official. So the county manager wants voters to organize a recall election. New tonight, a group of residents saying they are gathering tomorrow in protest of Gutierrez on the job. They want him removed. On Facebook, they are telling everybody about a protest that is happening tomorrow at 8 o'clock. It is going to happen in front of the county building. You can count on our New Mexico Mobile Newsroom coverage throughout the day tomorrow. Hey, also more investigations underway because of this video. It shows Las Cruces police officers beating a man in a holding cell. We had this last week. Well, new tonight, the state police department and the attorney general of the state now looking into this case. Russ Flynn's skull was fractured, he had bleeding in the brain, and he was put in the ICU. Officers said he was reaching for their weapons, though. Flynn is now suing for $12.5 million. Well, some big news on the plan. Sports Park in Far East El Paso. We just jumped back from an expected autumn completion to late summer. August. Now, county commissioners approved a list of contractors already screened by Region 19, which recommends them for other projects like schools and government buildings. It means the county saved two months in screening its own list of contractors. And also, that construction project over at Montwood and McCray is complete. It took two years for city crews to build new sidewalks, redo the road, and improve the stormwater drainage system. That was the big one. Residents say this is great for the east side, especially the businesses in the area. Well, speaking of traffic, again, another live look at it. I-10 and Joe Battle, Far East El Paso. Looks good out there. Remember, as we could see some rain showers, the roads could get wet. But for right now, they look pretty dry. Just drive safely. And we are connecting you to us through our social media network. You can find us. Right here in front of you, um, on your screen, Facebook, see you on the CW and KBIA.com, the two pages, and on Twitter, there you have it, Instagram as well. All the discussions are underway right now for today's news. By the way, ABC7 Breaking on Twitter is where you get all the constant updates. Now let's get back to uh, one of the big talkers, Nicole Andrews Basketball, playing in the Final Four Thursday against the number one ranked team in Texas. Lancaster. And we're providing a link to the website that will air the game live from San Antonio. And this is what some of the Andrus fans had to say on KVI tonight. Kind of upset, like Stephanie Bob. Yeah, telling us this. You had said you were going to televise it. Okay, well, Stephanie, we really wanted to. We were planning on it, but the game is actually controlled by Fox Sports Southwest, and they hold the rights to the game. We really tried. We just couldn't work it out, so we will not be broadcasting it. But again, we will be linking you to the webcast that Fox Sports Southwest is going to be putting on on their webpage. And Patrick's not happy either, Bob. It's only Northeast, after all. Had it been one of the two West Side schools or four older historic schools, KVIA would have would have had complete 24-hour news coverage from practice to tip-off. And Patrick going on to say tonight there would be a special pregame show full of weepy human interest stories and a nostalgic history of the school. The live stream from Snyder looked like a class assignment for an EPCC mass communications course. To call it rinky-dink would not do it justice. And Vicky tells us, really, KVIA, a webcast? When Canutillo went to state, it was televised. What makes this any different? Oh, wait, we're, in the nor we're a Northeast school. Okay, I just have to set the record straight. First of all, we love comments, so no matter what they are. So please, we love criticism. That's how we grow and learn. But just to let you know, because you might not know, uh, Nicole and I, we are graduates of Andrews High School. There is no way that we would let anything happen to uh, misrepresent a Northeast El Paso school. El Paso is El Paso, and we cover it the best we can. But right now, Fox Sports Southwest, Nicole, they're the ones who actually own the rights to the game. We cannot broadcast it. We can't even put it on our website. So it's a business deal, not because we're shunning anybody in Northeast El Paso. Yeah, it's kind of out of our hands. So it's we wish that it could be televised. Oh, yeah. uh, we'd be watching it, right, Bob? Yes, we would. <laughs> I wish I could actually go there uh, to San Antonio at the Alamo Dome and watch it. But anyway, just want to let you folks know uh, we are listening to what you have to say, and we just wanted to set the record straight so you know exactly what's going on here. Hey, there's another heated discussion on our Facebook page tonight. It all started on someone else's page, not ours. 
But it's all about El Paso's cultural center. And if you think it should be an Hispanic culture center or just a cultural center altogether, that's what people are talking about today. Let us know what you think right now. And what story has Jack saying this? Way to go, Bob and Nicole. I watch every night. Well, I'll just say, we hit a big milestone today on ABC 7 at 9. We couldn't have done it without viewers like you. That story coming up after the break. Nicole? And I'm still tracking showers on Doppler radar. I'll let you know if we're expecting more rainfall this week. We'll take a look at the latest future track computer model coming up in storm track weather. This is ABC 7 at 9 on the CW. You don't just watch the news, you are the news. We'll be right back.